Council is with us today. She's going to explain how some of the uh, the meetings will go a little bit later. So, um, with that, I'll give you Mayor President Josh Gillery. Right. Thank you, Jamie. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. We have 375 cases of COVID-19 on a base of 15,234 uh, tests. Today, unfortunately, we recorded our 16th fatality. This was our last day of screening and testing at the Cajun Dome. I am extremely proud of everyone who worked closely together, but six feet apart, to help our parish get ahead of the curve in testing our citizens for COVID-19. During the month that the site was open, we had a total of 2,011 vehicles come through. We tested 1,365 of our citizens and screened out 646. This effort fulfilled its purpose of lightening the load on area emergency rooms and medical providers. This was particularly important at the beginning when testing availability was much more limited. Now that testing is more widely available, including more rapid tests, we urge our citizens to contact your primary health care provider to see if you need to be tested. We also still have our 311 pre-screening service available to help determine whether individuals need to be tested. 311 is an important service since we don't yet have unlimited supply of COVID-19 tests available. Our 311 medical personnel have a list of places where testing is available, including testing sites that service our citizens on the north side. Our medical professionals will be able to recommend testing options for those who meet the criteria now that the Cajun Dome site has been closed. While testing criteria have been broadened and relaxed, we are still focusing on ensuring those most in need and most at risk are tested in a timely manner. We expect to eventually wind down this pre-screening service, but it remains active and available at this time. Yesterday, after our press conference, President Trump discussed his plans to reopen our economy. As you may have noticed, there is a spirited and robust conversation underway about how and when we need to reopen our economy while simultaneously keeping our people safe. The scope, of scope and timing of these efforts are under discussion with guidance from the CDC and FEMA. And as I discussed yesterday, Lafayette Consolidated Government will continue to heed the guidance of national, regional, and local public health experts as we plan for best practices and protocols going forward. We will continue to work within the legal framework provided under the Governor's emergency declarations while we work to provide our citizens and businesses with clear guidance on help how best to take these critical first steps. The need for clear communication is more important than ever. So I thank our local media for efforts to provide timely, accurate, and useful information to the general public. Our 311 service for business owners, employers, and employees continues to serve the needs of our community. I again thank LIDA for providing knowledgeable personnel to help with this effort. It is my understanding that there are still capacity issues for those applying for unemployment benefits. Patience and persistence are needed for those who are no longer employed. The first economic recovery payments have gone out from the IRS to our citizens, and that effort will continue in the coming days and weeks. The SBA is working out differences with commercial lenders to expand the participation for the PPP program and economic injury loans. Even with the time it is taking to ramp up these programs, we're talking record time with respect to how the federal government usually operates, which is good. Please continue to work with local lenders. Be persistent and patient as the SBA is dealing with loan applications that are many multiples of their normal volume. I think we can all agree that we are facing unprecedented fiscal challenges for our nation, our state, and our parish. Goldman Sachs has estimated that the federal deficit for 2020 will be $3.8 trillion. This is in line with other estimates suggesting the deficit will rise to $4 trillion in 2020 and over $2 trillion in 2021. 
We don't know if even this enormous expenditure will offset the impact of having virtually the entire national economy closed for two months or more. We can expect a significant impact on financial markets, bond ratings, and even the ability to get projects financed at all. At present, leading financial analysts are predicting a very rocky road ahead. Our public health emergency continues, but is now being joined by an additional massive economic and fiscal emergency. Lafayette Parish will be more heavily impacted than many parts of our nation due to the massive decline in energy prices. West Texas Intermediate, or WTI, is at $20 a barrel today. Brent crude is at $28. Since oil is a major driver of the Louisiana state budget and a major part of our local economy, we can expect a significant, a significant drop off in both the availability of state revenues and local sales tax revenues. I will soon be meeting with individual members of our city and parish councils to discuss the impact of these events on our city and parish budgets. In addition to the scale of the challenges that we face, we will need strong communication and unity of purpose to successfully navigate our budget process this summer and fall. I look forward to working closely with our council members, individually and collectively, to make the changes necessary to put our parish in a position to prosper, even under these unprecedented circumstances. Now, more than ever, this must be a time of fiscal discipline. It will have to be a time of fiscal prudence. We don't really have a choice. We will need every bit of discipline, creativity, and vision available to us to adapt and overcome the twin impacts of COVID-19 and very low oil prices. At this time, let's take a moment to pray for our parish, our state, and our nation and all of those who have lost their lives to COVID-19 around the world. Please join me. Thank you. I have time for some questions before Ms. Williams takes the podium, and thank you for joining us, Veronica. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. So, let's talk fiscal discipline, I Can you hear Christian? Christian, can you step up? So, I'm sorry, sorry Mike. Well, that's okay. Step, step up with your, with your arms. Just, there you go. Yeah, sure. So, so as far as fiscal discipline, have you identified a couple, of, a couple of spots, a couple of programs, a couple of lines in the budget that you feel like are obvious places to start as you're going in to start talking about? So right now we have to start with the zero-based budgeting. You, you heard that a lot in the last few years. Um, so it's a, it's a notion that I support wholeheartedly. We've got to we got to re-examine, again, we talked about this earlier this week, re-examine what is an essential government function, but we have, to, we have to examine what are essential government expenditures. I can't do that alone, so I need the city and council members to, to join with me in this fiscal prudence, and I have no doubt in my mind that they will take this matter very serious. We are definitely under unprecedented times, especially financially. Um, take the city general fund, for example. You know, and right now, before, all, before COVID-19 happened, uh, we were we were balanced, or excuse me, we were budgeted at an eighteen million dollar deficit. That's scary in and of itself. If would you take the public health emergency and the fiscal emergency that we now have due to COVID nineteen, that figure is is going to look a lot more grim. So again, I'm I'm eager to to work with our city and parish councils. Um, that I find them to be very good people. I think that they're going to work hard with us with the administration to to make the necessary decisions that we need to make. But everything's on the table. Any other questions? You said it was at an $18 million debt? That's correct. And, but, but there is a reserve, correct? So the general fund? Uh, was, I think what you're referring to as the reserve was budgeted at an $18 million deficit, which means that our previous city parish council budgeted a deficit, or excuse me, created a budget that spent more, more money than we have coming in. $18 million in the city. I'm using the city for example, but again, and to put this in scope of what we're talking about today, which is COVID-19 and the, the impacts it has on our, our economy, both locally 
at the state level and federally, I think we can all agree we're in uncharted waters. And I, I have no doubt in my mind that our city and parish council takes that serious just as, just as much as I do. So it's not, an or, it's not uh, unusual for us to start the budget process around this time. Um, this is my first year in office, and I, I can tell you before COVID came, before the, the public health emergency, we were having really good conversations with our city councilmen, uh, city council members, our parish council members, and we'll continue that dialogue when, once things settle down. Um, you mentioned in, in talking about this that there was some concerns about bond ratings, right, nationally. I've read a little bit that there is concern that this might affect state city bond ratings. Has, has Lori looked at that? Are we anticipating that we might see a reduction in, say, LUS's bond rating, the city's bond rating, et cetera? And, and with Lori, we're referencing our chief financial officer. As she Look, we have a great CFO, and she's looking at all that, and I think you I think you hit the nail on the head. That is a concern that we need to take seriously, and, and we will. And so to answer your question, yes. Any other questions up? All right.